As we saw in these last two examples, um, we can use this cross product method to determine whether the proportions are true or not. Now with these, we could have simply reduced the fractions fully and then seen whether they were the same or not. It won't always be that way. Here's where the cross product method really will help us out especially when we're working with decimals or fractions. You know, fractions on top of fractions. I mean, you know, this stuff that starts getting more scary looking. When we have situations like this, it's much more difficult to, you know, reduce this down. We're, we're not going to be able to do that here. So here's where the cross product really does come into play. Let's try this to see if these are, are true statements or not. We can do the product of 3.5 times 8. Hopefully that will be equivalent to the product of 4 times 7. So when we multiply 3.5 times 8, and you can use your calculator if you need to, or we've learned how to multiply with decimals, so you can do that by hand or the calculator. Um, 3.5 times 8 is 28. Now we need to know, is that equal to 4 times 7? Well, 4 times 7 is 28 also. So since that is a true statement, our proportion is true also. So 3.5 is to 4 as 7 is to 8. That's true. Here we have another one that's using all decimals. So let's, let's do our cross product technique. So 0.26 times 1.9 hopefully will be equivalent to oh, 0.39, oops, let me write that better, 0.39 times 1.3. Okay, so multiplying these decimals, 0.26 times 1.9, and we get 0.494. Hopefully that will be equal to 0.39 times 1.3. So again, use your multiplication of decimals, or you can use your calculator, and we get 0 .507. Now these two things are not true. So this is a false proportion. This is not a true original statement. Now also we can do this with fractions and mixed numbers. Again, using that cross product idea. So here we would have to do the cross product so we would have 2 and 5 eighths times 26, hopefully will be equal to 3 and 1 fourth times 21. Now, we don't like to multiply with, with um, our mixed numbers, so let's go ahead and switch this over. We can change this into an improper fraction. And when we do that, um, that would be uh, 2 times 8 is 16 plus 5 would be 21 over 8 times 26. Hopefully is the same thing as 12, 13 over 4 times 21. Now still continuing to uh, multiply this, and here we can go ahead and use our calculator if you're able to use one, and you can literally do 21 divided by 8 and then multiply that to 26 so we should get 68.25. And again, over on the right hand side, we'll do the same thing. Take 13 divided by 4, and then multiply times 21. And we should get 68.25 again. So this was a true statement. Let's try one more of these real quickly. Here we have 2 thirds times 8, hopefully will be equivalent to 2 times 2.7. So here again, or we don't really even have to, um, oh this was 2 thirds, I'm so sorry, I didn't write that properly. So we can do our, our calculator, we can say 2 divided by 3 times 8 and we should get 5.33333, it's going to repeat. Now when we multiply 2 times 2.7, we get 5.4, and even though those are close, they're not the same thing, so this is a false statement.